Uh, congrats on the win. We'll start it out with Adam Jardy from the Columbia. EJ, congratulations. Thank you. Um, you. You guys had the lead, and obviously it gets interesting like it tends to do. Uh, can you take us through the emotions of that last minute and a half of holding on and then, you know, and then pulling it out at the end? Uh, I had a ton of mixed emotions. I mean, Mr. Dunk, I was one, turned it over twice. But, I mean, I mean, I, everybody had my back. They told me to keep my head up, keep it high, and we just went out there and stay connected and try to win the game. All right, we'll go next to uh, Stephen Means, Cleveland.com. EJ, kind of along the same lines, I mean, you dealt with some a little injury with your arm. Can you just take us through that, first of all, what happened with your hand, but then also playing without Kyle, obviously Seth needing to ride the stationary bike to keep his keep his knee loose. Just some of the stuff that you guys have had to battle through to get to this point. Yeah, I mean, we're here now, Big Ten Championship tomorrow, and I feel like Everybody did the thing. I mean, without Kyle, we had to pick up his energy because Kyle brings a lot of extra effort plays and a lot of extra effort that we need to win games. And us just staying together and just fighting through adversity. I mean, they had their runs, we had our runs, but we came out on top. And I hit my like funny bone, I guess, and my hand kind of got numb. People thought it was broke, but no, nah, I'm, I'm fine. I just had to get some feeling back. All righty, next up, Whitney Harding. Whitney. Hey, EJ, um, kind of along the lines of what um, Adam asked earlier with closing out these games late, how is that pre preparing you guys for next week and moving forward that you just got to win? That's all it is. I mean, close games, got to win them. I mean, I wish they weren't as close all the time. Sometimes it gives me a heart attack being in the game. Uh, but, but, I mean, we don't fold under pressure, and that's what we've been doing Uh the three teams we played so far, we haven't beat them yet. And this is our first time beating them, so we just stay with it. And we always remember the time they beat us and they celebrated in front of our faces. All righty, next up, Patrick Murphy, 247. EJ, uh, the play of Dwayne today, um, you know, he obviously had a career high against Michigan the first time around and, you know, comes out and, and makes a, a ton of big shots in the second half. What, what was he like? Um, it seemed like he was extra motivated. I can't. I mean, any day I feel like Dwayne brings the same energy every single time. Uh, and today, I mean, we needed him big, huge, and he comes out there and produces. That's why he's a big time player. Uh, nothing but respect for Dwayne. And I, I'm so happy I'm able to play with him. All righty, we'll go next to Steve Hellwagon, 247. Yeah, EJ, uh, it's very rare for a team to win four games in four days and win this tournament. Uh, I assume everybody's going to get it ton of treatment overnight and uh, the good news is you don't play till 3 30 tomorrow bad news is you're playing illinois or iowa <laughs> just uh what's your thought kind of going from the frying pan into the fire tomorrow against uh, as good a team or better uh i mean yeah everybody's gonna get some treatment tonight uh everybody a lot of treatment and got a lot of sleep but i mean be both of those teams before and i just know what we can go out there and do uh we won four games um I mean, three games, but we're trying to go out there and win the fourth, and we got to keep our heads on straight and stay connected. All right, we'll go next to Colin Hill, 11 Warriors. EJ, do you feel like Dwayne is the kind of player who has a chance to, you know, in the in these tournament games, these and um, the ones you're playing in the NCAA tournament, become like some sort of a, a nationally renowned player that, you know, a lot of people around the country begin to talk about because of performances like these? Man, Dwayne's a primetime player. I mean, yeah, have y'all seen him? Uh, on a night in night basis, and I just feel like Dwayne is going to be a huge factor for us down the road. And and yeah, I can't thank him enough. I'm happy he's on my team for sure. I wouldn't want to play against him at all. Right, we'll wrap EJ up with Doug Lamarice, Cleveland.com. Uh, you, you you mute it right now. You're still muted. Sorry. Okay, cool. You're running the show here, man. You can do it all. EJ, how would you describe what this team is like, how well you guys play when you are connected on both ends, when everything's clicking? Can you just like, how would you describe this team when it's at its best? Hard to beat, honestly. I mean, if everybody's clicking on all pages and everybody's buying into the game plan and everybody's uh, playing together, I mean, it's hard to beat. I and mean, we showed that uh, we had a little tough little four game stretch, but came back out and it's just winning games. And tonight, Hopefully everybody gets some rehab, some sleep, and a lot of fluids in them. Come back for tomorrow.
Thank you, BJ. Yes, All right, EJ. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Thank you. All right, Dwayne. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time today, Dwayne. We'll start it out with Adam Jardy from the Columbus Dispatch. Dwayne, congratulations on the win. Uh, <coughs> playing a third game in three days, legs were going to be a thing. You had five points at the half, and when it seemed like you might wear down, that's when you seemed to rise up in this one. What did it take to dig in and, and to make that run in the second half that you guys did to put them away? Um, <clears throat> for me, man, I, I, I told the guys that, um, you know, we, we've been doing this our whole lives, uh, playing every day, playing multiple games in a day. Uh, I, I tried to just break it down and make it that simple. It's, it's like AAU, um, summertime, traveling, staying in the hotel, and playing basketball games with your, with your brother. So, um, you know, coach gave us a, a, a good uh, motivational um, t talk at <clears throat> halftime. Told I mean, EJ, we need to um, step it up and um, all the guys to step it up. Um, you know, we weren't shooting the ball great, missed some easy bunnies in the first and um, just had to come out in the second and, and, and lock in a little bit more. Um, I got something to go early, hit my first one. So um, at that point, I just knew uh, I, I really want this. Uh, our guys really want this. And, um, you know, it's it's now or never. So, uh, you know, those legs started to get back under me and uh, we were able to finish the game. All right, we'll go next to Stephen Means, Cleveland.com. When I think we've asked you a similar question to this. Can you just describe what type of style of a leader you are? Positive, positive, uh, a positive leader. Um, that's that's. My my go to thing, uh, positive energy, uh, manifest every, greatness. Uh, that's what that's what I abide by. So keeping my guys positive and making sure that they're confident in themselves. We'll go next to Bill Landis from the Athletic. Dwayne, I think a lot of people see see that positivity from you when you're on the floor, but but I'm wondering if you feel like you need to ratchet it up even more when late in the game Michigan starts clawing back and and they have an opportunity to win a game that you guys were leading by double digits. Yeah, um, you know, <clears throat> uh, basketball is a game of runs. Um, you know, we definitely are going to continue to learn from from these games that we've been playing. Um, you know, we yes, they've been coming down to the wire, and um, you know, but we've been doing a good job. Um, you know, we just got to stick to what we've been doing, stay confident in each other, um, keep believing in, in what we got going on. <clears throat> All righty, next up, Whitney Harding. Whitney. Hey, Dwayne. Yesterday when I asked you and Chris about playing Michigan, you guys said the defense had to improve, and it did today. How much have you guys – how does that show that you guys have learned so much since the last few weeks? Yeah, um, effort and details. I think, uh, you know, putting our heads to bed last night, we knew those were the two things that we needed to, to, to focus on, effort, details, and, and, and re winning the rebounding battle. Um, and I think we definitely won those effort plays, those 50-50 balls, CJ uh, early in the um, second half uh, threw his whole body on the court, got one, um, threw it to me, and, and then we ended up getting an and one on that possession. Um, so stuff like that is, um, is is what got us this W tonight. All righty, next up, Pat Murphy, 247. Dwayne, after you guys played Michigan last time, you, you said you would see them again, and, and you brought that up yesterday. Uh, did, did this one mean a little bit more to you, given – you know, rivalry, what they did on, on your court, and obviously what was on the line getting to the championship game. Yeah, definitely, man. Um, you know, <clears throat> everybody knows that uh, we lost to them earlier in the year. It was one of the best college basketball games, if not the best um, of the year. So, um, you know, a lot of hype, a lot of energy, a lot of excitement. Um, we were really excited for this one. Uh, and, and we got the one that, that quote unquote mattered and we're moving on. So um, super excited for, for tomorrow and um, what's in store. Alrighty, next up, Colin Hassfield, 11 Warriors. Ben, I think you're above 50% from, from three against against Michigan in your career. I know you mentioned Grand Rapids after the game. What's what's about you and, and these specific matchups that, that has led you to play so well? Um, you know, I, I don't think about it too much uh, other than that I am from Grand Rapids and I'm a Michigan kid. Um, you know, you know, everybody wanted to go to Michigan, Michigan State growing up, so. Um, that, where I'm from, at least. So uh, it's just, you know, that that extra little chip in, in the back of my head and I'm on the rivals or I'm on the dark side now for the guys back home. But 
in Columbus, I went to the good side. So um, <clears throat> all those things are, are jumbling through my mind. But, you know, um, gamers do gamer things and, and players make plays and um, just try to go out there and do whatever I got to do for, for my team to win. All right, we'll do two more with Dwayne here. We'll go to uh, Steve Hellwagon. Steve. Yeah, Dwayne, just uh, your thought. I mean, the lead had gone 12 to 10 to 8 to 6 to 4 to 1, and they got a shot in the air to win it. I mean, what's going through your mind on that last possession? Can't foul, and uh, you can't make it. Just what's what's going through your mind when that ball's in the air? Yeah, uh, yeah obviously you got to move on from from everything that, that happened. You know, obviously we were, we were up 12. They got it to 1. Um, you know, the last huddle we had before we um, – actually turn the ball over for them to get another shot up on the rim. Um, coach said, hey, forget about everything else. We have one job. We got to score and get a stop. And, you know, we didn't score. And they, I looked at I looked at our guys and said, hey, this is it. This is this is the one. This is the last 30 seconds working out with Coach Q. This is it. Like, um, finish. And then we, we, we um, pulled it out. Thank you. All right. And we'll wrap Dwayne up with Doug Lamarice. Doug. Dwayne, could you describe the feeling of when you guys are on the court and you're connected and you're at your best and just what it feels like? There, there feel like there are moments with this team when it's just all flowing together. What, what's it like when you're in that moment? Yeah, I, I, there's, no, there's, no, there's no words to describe the feeling because I know exactly what you're talking about and there's no words to describe it, man. It, it's second to none. You feel it in your blood when you're connected out there with your brothers. And um, it's about one of the best feelings in the world, I, I, I'll tell you that. For sure. <clears throat> thank you, Dwayne. Awesome. Dwayne, thank you very much. Appreciate your time and good luck tomorrow. Thank you, guys. All right, Coach Holtman, thank you uh, very much for your time. Uh, we'll uh, we'll let you take it over. Can we get can we elevate this some way? All right, guys, thank you. Uh, listen, uh, was a was a, a really good team we played. Got a lot of respect for uh, for those guys and that team and, and Juwan um, and and the job. Uh, I, obviously, those guys are are used to winning for for a number of years now between John and. And now uh, what Jawan's doing, really good players, really good team. One of the elite defensive teams uh, in the country based on numbers right now. I thought their length and size bothered us. That gone it, do we make it interesting? Um, but I, I, you know, I give our guys a lot of credit. I just, I give them a lot of credit. I think they, um, they battled in, you know, I told uh, our sophomore who's had an unbelievable season, you know, it was probably not his best uh, three and a half minutes, but it was a, a one of his best uh, defensive possessions there late on the switch out to to challenge Mike Smith's shot. So um, the credit to him for responding. All righty, we'll uh, open it up with Brendan Gulick, Buckeyes now in SI. Chris, congratulations on the win. Uh, I want to want to ask you here. You know, you, you've told us several times about how the beginning of this season, you weren't sure if the season was even going to happen and how the guys, you know, were so focused on living in the moment. You wanted this team to enjoy the moment. They've won three games in three days, and now you have a chance to play for a championship. And this season has gone very well so far for you. What's it feel like to know that 
at a minimum with all that you've been through the last 12 months that you will have a championship game here in front of you tomorrow? Oh, it's, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's, uh, I, I've told you guys, you know, dating back to the summer, I, I didn't know what uh, this group could be, but um, in, in our journeys, our, our story's still being written. But what I did feel is, is incredibly good about this group. And I feel incredibly good about our young guys, our old guys. Um, I feel incredibly good about our culture, and that's a credit to our guys. Um, and uh, it's exciting, you know. You, I mean, listen, every game here has been a challenge. We certainly could have lost all three of them, but um, uh, we also, you know, probably dropped one or two that we we could have won. So. Um, I give our guys credit. It's a, it's a phenomenal experience. I'm glad they're enjoying it. All righty. We'll go next to Adam Jardy from the Columbus Dispatch. Chris, what kind of, uh, I, I guess, what are you telling your guys throughout the course of the game when you're, you're playing your third game in three days, you, overtime yesterday, you know that legs are going to, and fatigue are probably going to become an issue at some point. What are you telling your guys and what are you seeing from them on the bench as this game goes on that enables you to have a, a run like you did in the second half to take that lead the way that you did? Yeah, Adam, I just think this group um, has real fight to them. They have real, you know, we, we use words like grit way too much, and uh, we do it as coaches, but um, uh, this team has that. Um, it has that uh, at a high level, and I think that was evident in this in that stretch. Um and, and I, I, I do think, Adam, to your point, that was, that was the difference in the game, that stretch. Uh, that was the difference in the game. I thought C.J. Walker, you know, listen, we ran an action, a rescreen action there late. You know, he, he stepped out of, out of bounds there. But I, I will be honest with you, his pursuit of loose balls in the second half, holy cow. I mean, some of those loose balls he got, like, so, uh, unbelievable. They were unbelievable. And uh, – um, I, I'm going to think about that uh, when I think about him a lot. All righty. Next up, Whitney Harding, WCMH. Whitney. Hey, Chris. Yesterday I asked you about playing Michigan. You said the defense has to be better. I mean, 92 points in the first game, 67 today. Uh, Livers helped out a little bit there. But sure. what did you see from the guys out there defensively today? Yeah, obviously, uh, I, I feel for Isaiah. I hope he, he gets back and is healthy and they, they, can, they can have him in the tournament. Um, uh, he, he certainly makes a difference, but we also FaceTime with, with our guy right after the game. We, we missed him too. Um, and they have, they have really good players. Uh, Sean Drew Brown's a, a great player. But I, 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 to your point, I think that's, that was the difference. It's really been the difference, Whitney, in this tournament is our commitment on that end, which – um, uh, you guys know, I've been honest that, uh, I felt like I needed to coach that better. This is the first time in my career where I feel like I've just been disappointed at times, uh, with, uh, for, for long stretches with our team's defensive effort. Um, and some of that has been because we've been so good offensively. It's been too easy at times, but, uh, their commitment on that end, um, it's them. They're the ones that have really renewed a commitment, and hopefully that'll continue. All right, let's go next to Patrick Murphy, 247. Chris, uh, Dwayne in the first game uh, scores 30 points against Michigan. Afterwards, he told us uh, that you guys would see them again down the road. He brought that up yesterday. Comes out and, and has that second half. D did you sense something in him that, that he, he this game means more or meant more, I guess? It always does to that kid. I, I don't even know his stats. I haven't even looked at him. Um, but uh, it, it, it does to that kid. You know, it, it does. Oh, that's a pretty good stat line. Um, it, it really does uh, matter to him. It really does. You know, being a Michigan kid, growing up there, um, you know, this rivalry means a lot to, to a lot of our guys, especially, you know, guys that have grown up in Ohio. And even guys like EJ, who now have seen, um, you know, after a, a couple years, a year and a half, what these games mean to our fans. And that's really, you know, we carry that with us. We know what it means to our fans. Um, and Dwayne, Dwayne feels that. He knows what this game means to our fans. It's not football. We understand that. 
but Dwayne Washington, he cares about that. And, and he is as dialed in in these games um, as, as any, uh, more than any, he plays his entire career. All righty, we'll go next to Bill Landis from The Athletic. Bill. Chris, I wanted to ask you a little more about, about the defense. This was um, Michigan's second worst two-point field goal percentage game of the year, and you guys managed to defend them pretty well in there. I mean, outside of Dickinson, who's going to get his, but, but you do it without Kyle. Just how, how were you guys able to kind of manage that without a guy who's probably your best interior defender? Yeah, I tell you, Bill, I, I do think there is a bit of an advantage – when you when you get beat by a team and you play them so quickly um, because you, you have a chance to make adjustments um, and you really do get a chance to see uh, areas that we just did not um, maybe prepare our guys as well or, or just we just we just didn't execute defensively as well. Um, we executed this defensive game plan maybe as, as well as as any um, that I've coached. Um, they just were really locked in, and um, I, you know, our guys were physical. They were tough outside of a couple fouls. Um, they were phenomenal, but I do think Bill, some of that speaks again to their renewed commitment. I hope, you know, I hope it speaks to their renewed commitment on that end. Um, I think they understand that we're we're going to live a pretty short life if if we don't be, if we're not more consistent on that end. All righty, next up, Stephen Means, Cleveland.com. Coach, a little bit more on, on Dwayne. I asked him what his leadership style was, and he said positive. And obviously, he elaborated on that. But given what the last three weeks have been like for you guys, the four-game losing streak, the way these games have played out, how important is the way he maybe approaches his leadership style been for your guys from just a confidence standpoint? Yeah, good. it's a good question. Um, yeah, Dwayne's really positive. He's really loose. He's really positive. I also think he understands this is hard, you know, uh, Twitter coaches don't always understand that this is hard. Um, what we're doing is hard. We're playing a really good team. Um, uh, and and you got to accept. Uh, the thing I love about Dwayne, and, and just like, you know, we, we had to embrace and own the fact that we, we didn't do some things well in that four-game stretch, um, that we had to do better, Stephen. And, and we also, also realized that we, we did play – well in stretches outside of maybe one game where I thought it was our poorest performance of the year. Um, but his positivity is really important. Um, his energy and his, and on, I'll be honest with you, in a, in a COVID year, when uh, you test every morning, um, you're isolated, his passion for playing and competing and being at Ohio State has made an enormous difference. Like, look at the kid before every game, you know, he misses our fans dearly, but look at him before every tip. I mean, the guy loves what he's doing and that's contagious. It, it really is. All righty, next up, Steve Hellwagon, 247. Yeah, I want to ask you about uh, EJ. There had to be some uh, really uneasy moments when he's <laughs> on the ground and he's holding his wrist or his hand yeah. there and, uh, made a great play to recover and block that shot, but you know, it seemed like he injured himself. Whatever, just uh, and for him to come right back in and hit two three pointers like pretty quickly after that. I don't know what that says about his resolve and resiliency, but just uh, your thought about uh, his second half was other than as you said, those last few possessions was maybe as yeah. good as he played in a while. No doubt, Steve. I, I'm with you. I was on alert with with that. You know, he slapped, he slapped that, the, the, it, I think he obviously hit the ball first, which gave me, uh, but he might've followed through and hit the glass, I don't know. But it was a concern because he was in serious pain, Steve. Uh, I think we all understand how important he is. But more, more, you know, more than that, you don't, you don't want any kid to miss any games or miss any time. He's loving playing. So I honestly thought we might not have him for the rest of the half. And I give Juwan credit. I asked him about his kid uh, that went down on the same play, and he asked me about EJ. Um, uh, hoping both guys were healthy. Fortunately, both guys got back in uh, got back in the game. But uh, it was a relief, honestly, when I realized it was just a maybe a bit of a stinger. All righty, next up, Spencer Holbrook, Letter Monroe. Chris, you guys started this Big Ten tournament with a win over Minnesota, who had beaten you guys earlier, and you you 
beat a Purdue team that had beaten you twice. Now you beat Michigan. Um, you guys had a pretty good resume coming into the tournament, but but are you guys proving something to yourselves as you guys go through this this three game stretch here uh, and win three straight games here? I don't know that we look at it like that, Spencer. I think we're just you know we're honestly trying to play um, a few more possessions of quality basketball. As simple as that sounds. I don't know that we're on a mission to prove anybody. We weren't panicking when we lost four in a row, much like I'm sure a lot of people were. We, we weren't, our guys weren't panicking. Uh, we didn't think, you know, the season was headed in a direction. We understood that there's ups and downs. We're not a perfect team. We're not perfect players. We're not perfect coaches. We just are trying to, trying to move along and get better. And that's, I think, really been the focus as much as anything. Is uh, and that'll continue to be the focus. You know, how can how can we be a little bit better than what we you know what we were in certain areas? So, um, I I do think that you know honestly, um, I don't want to minimize the fact that uh, winning that that game, the first game, how that was important. I, I do think that. Um, now, I'm not saying that we if we lost, we'd have went in the NCAA tournament and had zero confidence. I don't believe that about this group. But, but I do think, Spencer, that there is a, um, something about winning a game and your guys feeling a certain way and playing with maybe with a little bit more levity um, after that. And I think that's, that's probably been, been important for us. Already got time for just a couple more. We'll go to Doug Lamarice, Cleveland.com. Sorry, Chris. Um, Obviously, you were saying this uh, today was a lot about the defensive effort, but all year, you know, sometimes on offense, you guys are so connected. You're so, yeah. it's so smooth. Yeah. Just that level of play, whether it's in a game you have it a ton or whether it's one of the games we don't have a ton, but when you guys are doing that on offense, how high of a level is that? I mean, you've been around a long time. How would you yeah. describe that level of offensive play when it's there? It's the, it's the best. Uh, when we're moving it and, and, Doug, I think you're to your point, we did not move it as well today. Right. It stuck a little bit, particularly early in the first half. It just stuck. And I, I don't think necessarily it was the pressure. I think we just, the ball, it was sticking too much. Um, but when it is moving and we, we, when the ball is finding the open man and it's, uh, it's as good as offense as, as I've coached. And, uh, you know, last year we had a top 20 offense. A couple other years I've had top 20 offenses. But the difference really, uh, Doug, is, is EJ's versatility and then some of the um, interchangeable parts that we have. Now, I've, I've all, you know, listen, I, I get it that sometimes our lack of size hurts us defensively. It has. But um, when you have a, a player like EJ that is such a hard matchup, uh, and then you add in Dwayne and, and then some of our other guys that have really embraced a role. Um, I think when the ball moves, it really is an effective offense. Justice Suing has helped us because he's a guy that can touch the paint. Uh, and we've really needed that. Um, so, uh, you know, I think we've got to probably coach moving the ball a little bit better. But when it's moving, it's, it's, it's as good as I've coached. All righty. Uh, we'll go next to Dan Hope from 11 Warriors. Hey, Chris, you mentioned uh, FaceTime and Kyle after a game. Just do you know, you know, what his status could be, whether there's any chance he could play tomorrow and what that might look for going to the NCAA tournament? I mean, I, I don't uh, – he's, he's, you know, day to day. I, I don't anticipate him being available tomorrow. As far as beyond that, um, it's very much he, – he's being evaluated day to day. He was in great spirits, as you'd expect. I mean, we had his jersey hanging in the locker room. and. You know, um, our media people, our social media team did an unbelievable job. They put the jersey that got ripped last year um, in the hallway out here. They put uh, a uh, put it up on the screen, um, a picture of it. You know, so it was a constant reminder, kind of 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 uh, of a guy who really does care about this this rivalry. All right, and we'll wrap it up with Colin Hill from 11 Warriors. Chris, I think high scoring and, and energetic guards can sometimes, you know, really pop in the national spotlight when the, when the postseason comes around and they can perform at a high level. Do you feel like the, the country is, is learning and, and about to learn a, a lot more about, about Dwayne Washington? 
That's an interesting question, Colin. Um, I don't know that, listen, I hope people realize he's a heck of a kid and a heck of a player. Um, I, you know, been well documented uh, how much I love him and, and sometimes um, our, our relationship has its moments, but uh, I don't, you know, I haven't really looked at it like that. I think Dwayne understands he's really focused in the moment. And I think, listen, that we, we're going to have a huge challenge tomorrow. We're going to have a huge challenge in our opening NCAA tournament game. So I think that's always focused right now. And I think if he gets off of anything else other than that, Colin, um, it, it, it can be really a dangerous place to, to go for, for a kid. Uh, but from a coach's perspective, um, listen, I hope he continues to perform at a high level because I want him to get everything he's earned. All righty, Coach. Thank you very much for your time, and uh, good luck tomorrow. Okay. Thanks, guys.